Blog Talk Radio. That um, you've also started a magazine. Um, which is very important to your particular uh, style. Um, uh, tell us about the magazine that you um, that you are editor and chief of the magazine. Yeah, it's called the uh, Shinobi no Mono magazine, and um, a ninja is kind of a new word. That's not quote unquote what they would have been called, depending on the pro- uh, the prefecture that you were in at that time. Mm-hmm. They would have been called things like Rapa, Oniwaban. Um, Shinobi, Shinobi no Mono, Iga no Mono. They had different names. So the word ninja that we use now is just kind of like a, a term that we use to just wrap up that type of a warrior. Okay. okay? Um, but traditionally, Shinobi no Mono was the name of, of that specific warrior. Um, so there's a, you know, back, oh, I don't know, let me see, back in the 80s, I think, um, there was this magazine called the Ninja Magazine. I absolutely okay. loved it. And uh, anyway, the, um, it, you know, it's not around anymore, and I missed it. And growing up, I really loved the magazine. So I thought, well, since I, we're doing ninjutsu, why not try to do the same type of thing and give, you know, like when I was little, I got that ninja magazine. I can give the, the kids and people who want to see, you know, authentic, traditional ninjutsu. Exactly. And, um, you know, and, and then they can pick up the same magazine. So, or, you know, something very similar. Of course, ninja magazine, can't you can't repeat that. So, and I thought, well, since we're doing... Since I want to break away from that that Hollywood image of you know the straight blade ninja toe with only the ninjas character shuriken and the, the black mask kind of thing, I wanted to break away from the Hollywood image and really right. show classical, authentic you know shinobi no jitsu. We're going to use the real name shinobi no mono. Okay. So um, that's what the that's what the magazine was. We started in 2004, and um, it's going really strong. It's a quarterly publication. Okay. Uh, so there's four every year, and um, okay. you know next month we have we're starting in the next I think it's the fifth year now fourth fourth fifth year yeah. Congratulations, congratulations. Um, to tie into that, you also offer uh, a home study program and explain how would that work and who who would it be open to. Uh, the home study program is open to anybody. Uh, again, the the idea of what we do is to give real information and to help anybody who wants to learn these arts. Um, with no politics. So there are many times, I mean, you know, I'm not even, uh, am I going to sit here and say that a home study program, learning from a DVD and a book, is better than personal instruction? No, I don't believe that. However, I think that learning from learning a, from a good DVD and a good book and someone you can pick up the phone and call people 24-7 and they can help you train, right. you can still be better than going to someone who's a really bad instructor. Right. You know, just because you're seeing someone face to face doesn't necessarily mean you're getting quality instruction. Exactly. That's so true. you know, there's that. I mean, I think we we can all say that when we go to when we go to college, we go to high school. You know, you learn from a book. Yeah. You know, you learn a lot of things. If you've ever played sports, what do they give you? They give you a playbook. playbook yeah. You know, and you learn your plays, and then you go practice, and then that's how it is. So, martial arts really isn't any different. I mean, as long as we have so many tools now, we have, you know, we do podcast training, webcast classes. We have people, thousands of people all over the world every Saturday log on just to see our live classes and participate. Wow. The DVDs go very much in depth. We're actually getting away from the DVDs because we're, we put so much information at every level. It's not just a 60 minute or a 90 minute DVD anymore. Now we're, we have a whole new thing getting launched this next month in January called the Budo Du Online University. So you'll have a password and a key code and you can go in and learn everything you need to know. All the questions and answers, all the CUDA, all the training drills. You can upload your own video, and you'll have people, uh, black belts, that can view your test and say, look, this is what you're doing wrong. This Mm -hmm. is what you need to do to get better and Mm -hmm. help yourself, better yourself in martial arts without all the politics. Right, right. So uh, anybody can do, anybody can train with us. We don't shut the door on anybody. Okay. Yeah, I've seen uh, quite a few of your um, your, your, your YouTube videos, and they're very, very good. Um, With that saying... um, the your your organization. How many schools now do you have under you, and how many students do you have now under you? Well, with the, through um, through the through the home study program, okay, um, and the, everything that we do, we've got a little of. We have over nine thousand students worldwide, cool. and uh, twenty two schools. Um, now the schools itself, you know, they've all started. People, most of these have started long distance, and they fly in or they drive in, or I go out there. And then okay. we build a rapport, and then they start teaching. So there's a, there's a definitive personal attachment to each one. 
I see. And they take care of their students, and I te- and I take care of the teacher. So that's kind of how that works. But um, I tell you, back in 2004 when we started, there I would have never imagined us growing um, to the size that we have. Wow. There, you know, everyone has everyone has a. I would say everybody, but for the majority, a lot of people have. You can't log on and not get a karate black belt program or a, you know, a ninja program or something like that. And so there's there's a lot of competition. And to see that, we, you know, we only started in 2004. The, the home study program started in 2005. So in a matter of five years, we've got, you know, 9,000 students in, four, in 22 schools. Wow. You know, that's very successful. And, you know, I, you know, I'm very honored that so many people have logged on and, and they want to train with us. And I am truly honored, and that's why we want to do the um, online university so I can give it even more wow. because I can't stick it on one disc. I want to, I want to give everybody more. And uh, so we're constantly upgrading uh, to make it better for everybody. Right, right. Um, the, the traditional art. Um, some think that the traditional arts are pretty much a thing of the past, a dinosaur, just just a mere history. Um, versus today's uh, MMA. What what is you, what are what are your opinions on today's MMA? Well, that's a very that's a good one too. Um, I think the MMA is great. I do. Um, I, that, to me, tradition is everything. I, I you know everything that we do is tradition. You know, you know we all we're all going to celebrate specific holidays coming up, and each one of those holidays, you know, you learned a specific tradition from yeah. your parents or your grandparents. So it, we are tradition. You know, yeah. in our hearts, we're all tradition. So I, you know, I don't know that it's really part. I think deep down, what's intriguing is that there is a traditional side to everything. Mm-hmm. But um, the MMA, what, what really, what gets me about MMA, and um, I'm really not a fan of, of MMA. I'm really not. Okay. Uh, one of my jiu-jitsu teachers, um, one of my jiu-jitsu teachers is really into mixed martial arts, and he's very successful at training people. And uh, I love him very much, but uh, I'm just really not a big fan of mixed martial arts. Okay. But I think that it's done a lot for the traditional schools. Mixed martial arts, what a lot of people have to understand is it's a sport fighting art. It's not mm-hmm. martial arts. Okay. You know what I mean? You can train in martial arts to compete in MMA, but MMA itself is not martial arts. Okay. MMA is a fighting sport. An example, you can say, hey, I want to study Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Okay, that's a martial art. Right. MMA is a fighting sport. So, so many times, that's why I don't like the word MMA, mixed martial arts. It right. makes people think it's martial arts. It's right, not martial exactly. arts. It's a fighting sport, right. Yeah, if, I wish they would have just said this is ultimate fighting, not MMA. Right. If they would have said, hey, this is the ultimate fighting or ultimate cage fighting, I'd have been totally okay with it. But since they, they put the tag on their martial art, I really don't like it because it gives a bad image. I, I think I think when you you got a kid that, you know, when I was growing up, there was no such thing as Internet or email or iPhones or anything like that. Hmm. And then you get these kids that are 9, 10 years old or whatever, and they get on there and they see this one fighter cussing out another fighter and flipping them off and, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and right, right. that's really bad. And then the parents are going to think, oh, well, why do I want to put my kids in, in martial arts? Because that's exactly. what they're going to do. Exactly. And that's not martial arts. That is a fighting sport. And those are the, I'm not taking anything away from the, the, the MMA fighters. Right. They're, they're great athletes. They're highly conditioned. They're very good at what they do. I'm not yeah. taking anything away from their skill, yeah. but it really does put a bad image on the actual martial art community. Because yeah. they're using the term martial art, and it's not a martial art; it's a fighting sport. So, with that itself, that's why I'm really not I'm really not big on the the, the mixed martial arts. Um, who who are some of your influences in the martial arts? You mean uh, people I looked up to in the martial arts? Yes, absolutely. People that you looked up okay. to in the martial arts as you were coming up in the ranks and had a a, a deep impact on you. Uh, Chiro Kobayashi. Kobayashi Sensei was my biggest influence. Um, and there we also have a master, Steve Crawford. He was a very big influence um, that I looked up to in the martial arts. He was so humble. And um, so I think that, I, I don't know, I, I think a lot of times when people ask the question, like, well, who's Kobayashi Sensei? Oh, he's my teacher. Who's Mr. Crawford? Well, he's one of my teachers. You know, or, you know, I think that people want to hear the, the Bruce Lee or the, you know, Jet Li kind of thing. You know, oh, it's right. amazing. And, those, and those, honestly, those, those, it really wasn't. Those, you know, those yeah, are those like were the common the names, you know. For me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there really weren't anything that did it for me. I mean, I think that uh, just the, the the regular guy that puts on the gi that was helping me train, those are the people right. I look up to. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that's where the honor is, to make sure that you're doing something um, to honor them. 
you know, so, uh, yeah, we, uh, Steve Crawford, Master Steve Crawford, who runs American Jiu-Jitsu, um, and before he had passed away, I really looked up to um, Hanshi Ken Penlin of the uh, Shorin Jiru Jiu-Jitsu Federation. I okay. really looked up to him. He was had wonderful conversations before he passed away with cancer. Um, Kobayashi Sensei. So uh, those were the ones that really looked I looked up to the most. Okay, very well. What is the future? We've already talked about uh, some of the things that was coming up next month uh, for your organization. What do you see the future for uh, for your for Budo Ru Ninjutsu Dojo? Well, I think we're, as far as Ninjutsu itself, uh, Ninjutsu is really on this. Um, in, in my opinion, it's really on this this line of a lot of people are starting to see that everything that they learned in the 80s that was in 90s that was called ninjutsu, uh, yeah. they're starting to see that, well, that's not really ninjutsu. I was learned that if I throw a punch like this, if I hit this Ichimanji no Kamai, that this is ninjutsu. Well, that's not ninjutsu. That's koshi jitsu or taijutsu. Right. You know, so uh, now they're starting to see that, wait a minute, that's not right. So ninjutsu is starting to change, and I think that we're on the good side of that. I think there are people like um, there's uh, Soke uh, Jinichi Kawakami in Japan, the Budo Jinichi Dojo, and we're giving real ninjutsu where they get to see, okay, well, you're teaching real samurai arts, real classical Japanese bujutsu, and authentic ninjutsu. And then those the students get to actually see that and right. something that's literally historical, not so much the idea of what they thought ninjutsu was. Right, was, because uh, I think a lot of times that, uh, well, uh, the ninjutsu was misunderstood. I mean, as you said before, in Hollywood, you know, it's seen as someone who has a mask over their face and, you know, you know oh, yeah. sneaking up behind somebody and, uh, you know, you know, taking them out. But um, it's very interesting to hear that there is, that you're teaching a history um, deeper than, much, much deeper than what Hollywood could p- portray um, ninjutsu as. And, um, uh, it's very interesting. I mean, if anybody who wants to um, get in contact with you as far as your website or your um, the home study uh, course, where could they find you? Um, well, they can find us online. We have lots of websites, but the main website, the official website, is www.budoruninjutsu.com, B-U-D-O-R-Y-U-N-I-N-J-U-T-S-U. BudoRuNinjutsu.com, and they can log on and they get all the information that we're talking about right there on their website. Very good. I mean, if anybody, if you anybody sees this website, it's very, very intense website. I've actually <laughs> seen it many, many times. I mean, there's many, many, many things on this website, and and every time I go back, I always see something different. Um, you you post something up every day, I believe, on Facebook. Um, we do. Yeah, what what is that, that actually that you post up? Um, well, when you got, I mean, I, I tell you, I, I didn't even know this till oh, about about three months ago, and I was amazed. Um, one of my, I got nine thousand students and all this. You know, you got to be involved somewhere so people can ask questions. Yeah. And uh, I don't really answer. I mean, I get probably I don't know five to seven hundred emails a day, so I can't really get to all the emails as much. I've okay. got other guys doing that, but I do post every day, and I try to get as much. I try to be involved as much as I can, especially like Facebook because it's. It's, it, right now, it's probably the most um, popular as far as the show, social, you know, uh, online social media, if you will. Yeah. And I do. We put up a daily zen every day. We put up videos every day. We put up, you know, just questions just to keep people talking because if they get talking, they, they're going to ask questions. And if they ask good questions, then keep, all their people are going to look at it. I mean, if you, if you, you know, like with our with, uh, with the Facebook, we've got 17,000 fans and friends or something like that on our page, 18,000, yeah. something like that. Yeah. That's a lot of people that's, you know, on just my page. Right, you know, exactly. So that's, uh, you know, you know, and I think that that's something that I think is good for them because then they can log on to it and they can see that and then they can be part of it. And it might inspire them, you know, to, you know, go out and do something better for themselves too. I mean, clearly we've only, the organization itself is 9,000 students and we've almost got double that on the, the fans and friends, you right. know, that sort of thing. But, I mean, that still means that people are interested. And it doesn't matter whether a student is learning and getting ranked or not, they're interested and they're getting real information. And that, to me, is what's important, touching people's lives and helping them become better. Budo is not what people think about. Budo is this clarity of mind and all this stuff. It's true. However, Budo is not just about making yourself better. Mm. Budo is about making everybody around you better. And Mm. if everyone around you is stronger, you're, you're stronger. 
Wow. So it's about helping everybody, and that's what that's what it's about. It's not about just making yourself better. Everybody has to get better. You know, the chain is only as strong as the weakest link. So you got to make sure everybody is strong. Everybody got the information, and everybody can do it. Mm. So that's Very that's really what it's giving the real information and help people understand truly what it is that we do. Mm. Very interesting. Um, again, give uh, your information out if somebody wants to get in contact with you. Um, because it's very interesting. This is not just uh, not just what you see on TV. This is the real thing, folks. <laughs> this is definitely the real thing. So, again, yeah, give out uh, your information. Yeah, the, the website is um, Budo Ninjutsu Dojo. I mean, um, it's Budo Ninjutsu Dojo. The website is www.budoruninjutsu.com. That's B-U-D-O-R-Y-U-N-I-N-J-U-T-S-U.com. And um, there's a contact page. If you have any questions, you can contact us. And we'll be more than happy to help you with any of your training if you're looking for uh, traditional Japanese arts. Very good. On to Krista Jacobson here on Martial Arts Weekly. I want to thank you for coming on the show. And we're going to have you again back on the show so you can go more in detail, uh, especially on some of your um, some of the Zen philosophies. Um, we're going to have you back again. But thank uh, you for wonderful. coming on tonight. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, continue much success in the Budaru Ninjitsu Dojo. Thank you.